watch party. Glory be to God. I'm going to talk for a little bit on I am Esther. I refuse to be Vashti. I am Esther. Oh my God. Let me say something else. Because the Lord has been impressing it so strong in my spirit and my heart. Let me say something else. And I know that there's been so much concerning this. And, and, and for a while the Lord pulled me off it. He pulled me back from it. Glory be to God. Because uh, if a prophet hears from God. And as a prophet hears from God. And releases what Father says. That prophet does not have to defend the word. Matter of fact none of us have to defend God's word. His Holy Spirit is able to defend his word. And so the Lord said to me as I was praying the other day. He said I want you to encourage the people to prepare themselves. Two things he said to me. Two things he said to me. He said tell the people to get in the ark of safety. And you hear me use that term so much. In other words, make sure your life is hid in Christ. Make sure you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Make sure you've accepted, accepted him as Lord of your life. That's the first thing he said to me. Tell the people. And I felt such an urgency as Holy Spirit said this to me. My God, I feel your anointing. I felt such an urgency as he said this to me. He said, tell the people, get in the ark of safety because serious times are ahead. And when I say ahead, I don't mean 10 years from now, five years from now. I don't even mean one year from now. Serious times are ahead, shortly to come. Get in the ark of safety. The Lord said to me, that was the first thing. And then he said to me, he said, he said, remind the people to cover themselves with the blood. Remind the people to cover themselves with the blood. And covering yourself with the blood is just simply having faith in the power of the blood and asking Holy Spirit to apply that blood to your life as a covering, as a form of protection. And then he said to me, attached to that, he said, I want you to begin to encourage the people to use the red cloth. Now remember I said, I spoke about this, and there was some controversy. The Lord said to me, be quiet. Glory be to God. He said, pull back and be quiet. Glory be to Jesus. And I don't know about the rest of the prophets, but this is one prophet that is obedient to God. And so I said to the Lord, okay. So even as I was praying again, he said, encourage the people as a symbol, just as a symbol of their faith. Encourage the people, glory be to Jesus, to tie the red cloth on their doors, their front doors, their back doors, Every door that has an entry and exit to your house or your dwelling place. And so to make it easy for you, because there have been people even to this very day that are calling and saying, Prophetess, could you anoint a piece of red cloth? Could you pray over it? And can I come and pick it up? So I'm going to do this. Glory be to Jesus. For those who are in the Bahamas or in New Providence, at our ministry, at Kingdom Explosion Ministries International, we are going to be giving out red cloths that you can tie on your front door, your back door, your doors of entry and exit to your dwelling place. We are giving these out free of charge. Our intercessors will be fasting and praying over these prayer cloths. Glory be to Jesus. And we will give them out, glory be to God, one per family. And so you want to make your way, those who are in New Providence, to Kingdom Explosion Ministries International on Jerome Avenue. And that's during the day, Monday to Friday, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. There is no charge. 
However, if you feel so led to sow a seed, you can. But we are not charging for the red cloth simply because I'm walking in obedience to the word of the Lord. And so therefore, don't come asking for 10 or 12. It's one per family. Amen? And so you want to make your way to Kingdom Explosion Ministries International. Matter of fact, you can do that as of Friday of this week. Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tie that red cloth that you will receive. Tie it on your front door. Tie it on your back door because it'll be long enough and wide enough where you can cut it probably in two strips. One on your front door, one on your back door. Glory be to God. Our intercessors are in-house. We have intercessors that are on staff here at Kingdom Explosion Ministries International in Nassau, Bahamas. They pray over everything. They pray over the ministry. They pray over Apostle and I. They'll be praying over the red cloths and there are people that call every day this church is inundated with calls every day. As long as we are here, and matter of fact, on the weekends, the phone is still ringing. People that are calling and asking for prayer, calling and asking for counsel, or even calling and saying that I'd like to sow a seed in the ministry. And so, of course, as of, 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 as of Friday coming, please come and get your red cloth, one per family. Glory be to God because the intercessors will be here in-house tomorrow and they will be praying over those red cloths in order to distribute on Friday. Glory be to Jesus. And of course, if you're coming into the sanctuary, you must have your mask on. We will be encouraging social distancing. I just needed to get that out there. Glory be to God. Now, I'm not going to argue about it. I'm not going to answer anybody about it. I don't have the time for it. Glory be to Jesus. I'm saying exactly what the Lord said. Now, for those who do not want it, that's fine. To each its own. But to those who would like to get a copy, glory be to God, or a piece of the red cloth, glory be to God, we'll be giving them out here at Kingdom Explosion Ministries International in New Providence, Bahamas, on Jerome Avenue, beginning Friday of this week at 11 a.m. To God be all the glory. All right. I am Esther. And I was talking just to get people in. Talking just to get people in. Glory be to God. Because I don't want you to miss the meat of the broadcast today. Go ahead and share this broadcast. Go ahead and create a watch party. Glory be to Jesus. Listen, tomorrow afternoon is going to be explosive in the house. This will be our first prophetic fire service since the lockdown. And so we're going to be here for two hours on Thursday, which is tomorrow, at 4 p.m. 4 to 6 p.m. It's going to be explosive. It's going to be fire in the house. There's going to be salvation, healing, and deliverance in the house. The intercessors are already praying on the service tomorrow. Glory be to Matter of fact, there's an intercessor here now that's praying as I'm recording this program because we are serious about prayer. We know that prayer is the foundation to any work that you will do for the kingdom. The foundation of it is prayer. Glory be to Jesus. And so therefore, we're going to be here. We're going to spend some time in intercession as a corporate body, tomorrow at 4 p.m. for two hours here at Kingdom Explosion Ministries International on Jerome Avenue. The Lord has given me a word. You don't want to miss it. You want to be in the house. You want to be present. Now listen, for those of you who are not here at 4, we're only allowing a certain amount of persons in the house. And so after we've met, uh, uh, met our capacity as far as what we're able uh, to accommodate according to the laws of social distancing, the rest of you will sit in your vehicles outside. Amen? We'll have a speaker out there. And so definitely, you want to come early. You want to be here at 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Amen? Kingdom Explosion Ministries on Jerome Avenue. And for those who are watching us internationally, we will be live on Facebook, of course, also on YouTube. So you don't want to miss that. 
Tomorrow we'll be getting at four, our prophetic fire healing and deliverance service. Wow. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm feeling that already. To God be all the glory. Hallelujah. All right. I am Esther. I am Esther. I don't know about you, but I refuse to be Vashti. I refuse. Did you hear me? To be Vashti. Oh my goodness. The Lord had me to post something on Facebook the other day. And I said, Lord, I said, this is a serious thing. But he said to me, he said, it is indeed true. He said, this is the season where the Vashtis are about to be removed. And the Esthers are about to come on the scene. But this is what he said to me. He said, the Esthers are about to come on the scene. They're going to be regal. They're going to be royal. And they're going to have much power. Oh, Jesus. What is this? So obviously you know that I'm not just talking about an individual that's looking good. I'm talking about an, an individual that is packing plenty power. But at the same time has influence. At the same time, has favor. At the same time, has a relationship with God. So he said to me, the Vashtis are about to be removed. And the Esthers, glory be to God, are about to be ushered on the scene. My God Almighty. That's why I said to you, I don't know about you, but I'm not a Vashti. I'm an Esther. Glory be to God. I'm a beautiful star, my God Almighty. Now listen, of course, we know that her real name was Hadassah. Esther was really the per Persian name, the name that she was given. But of course, the spirit of Esther is a spirit of supernatural favor. I didn't just say favor. I said supernatural favor. Because you can have favor, but it ain't got to be from God. Somebody could like you and do something good for you and ain't got to be God. But supernatural favor, divine favor, comes directly from the throne room of God. My God Almighty. And so Esther chapter 4, Esther chapter 4, it's a powerful chapter. And if I, if I can suggest to you, read it in your spare time. Esther chapter 4 and verse 14. I'll just read one verse. And it says, this is Mordecai. Mordecai is a type of Holy Spirit. Because the name God, none of the names of God is mentioned in the book of Esther. It's the only book in the Bible where you will not find one of God's name. Not one of it. Not one of them. There is nothing about the names of God mentioned in the book of Esther. But throughout the book of Esther, you will see the thread, threaded throughout the book of Esther, you will see the spirit of God's providential care, protection, and guidance. Glory be to Jesus. So Mordecai, who was Esther's uncle, we see him as a type of Holy Spirit in the book of Esther. And so he's talking. And sending a message to Esther. And verse 13. He said. Or it says. Then Mordecai. Commended. Or commanded to answer Esther. Think not with thyself. That thou shall escape in the king's house. More than all the Jews. And of course. I don't have the time to go into it. But read the book of Esther. In particular the fourth chapter. In verse 14 he said, For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, my God Almighty, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. 
and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Now listen here. You got to understand that Esther, hear me very clearly. You got to understand that Esther was prepared to reign. My God Almighty. See, see, you, you don't just come out of the blue and begin to reign or begin to rule or begin to lead. Not in the kingdom of God. That, that's not the way God's kingdom operate. Glory be to Jesus. Esther was prepared to reign and to rule. Esther was chosen by God. It didn't matter the circumstances under which she came into the kingdom. And of course we realize that she was taken from a family. And she was taken most certainly into the king's court in Shushan. And most certainly we realize that she was taken to a certain degree against her will. And so Esther went through very trying circumstances and situations. Imagine as a young girl being taken from your home and taken from your family's house and taken from your place of familiarity and taken from your place of comfort and taken from the place where who you are is solidified. And you are taken, most certainly, into a place that you know not of, among strange faces. Glory be to God. But for some reason, you realize, my God Almighty, that you are in the will of God. You realize that something good is going to come out of this. And so even in the king's palace, Esther found favor with one of the king's aides. My God, that was a sign. He was a eunuch, a sign to the women to prepare them for the king. And so this eunuch who knew about the king, knew his likes and his desires, knew to a certain degree his thoughts and his wants. And that eunuch is a sign to you. And you say to that eunuch, Say to me what it is that the king likes. And so therefore Esther, glory be to God, went through a whole year of training, of preparation. And some of it was not pleasant. My God Almighty. I feel your Holy Ghost. Some of it was not pleasant. That's why I can't get away from the message of the process. I never will. Glory be to God. Simply because everything that is going to be presented before the king must be processed. Even the king's wine has to, has to be properly processed. My God Almighty, Nehemiah, the cupbearer. Glory be to God. They were the ones that tasted the king's wine before he drank it himself. Even the king's wine had to be processed, had to be tested. Glory be to Jesus. And so anyone that's going to be used by the king, anyone and everyone that is going to be prepared to be used by the king of kings, the Lord of lords, must be processed. So Esther had to go through the process of being pruned and being refined. And whatever was in her body, glory be to God, that was considered an impurity, that was considered something that could not be seen by the king, some imperfection, whatever was there in her life, in her body, had to be removed, my God Almighty. And then she had to be prepared according to his liking, hear me. According to his standard, hear me. According to his protocol. Jesus and the Holy Ghost. The problem with us in the body of Christ is that we want to be prepared or we want to be used. But we don't want to be prepared. And we use grace as an excuse. I was just talking to my husband, Apostle Dion, today. And I said, you know what? I said, the Lord said to me, he 
said, I am not looking for anything from my children other than a yielded vessel that I can use. Oh, God Almighty. And I said to my husband, Apostle, I said, the problem with us in the body of Christ is that we have exalted gifts above character. We have exalted gifts above character. So people are functioning in gifts that have no character. They have no integrity. They are not walking in holiness. There are people that are preaching and prophesying. And it doesn't matter to me if you can prophesy accurate. If you are prophesying accurately, but you have no power over your flesh, then you are being controlled by the devil. Now, I can't say that a strong or stronger than that. Glory be to God. Esther could not come before King Ahasuerus unless and until she was prepared. Glory be to God. So I said to my husband, I said, we now need, as the church, we need to go back to holiness. We need to talk more about holiness. Because Father did not say, without gifts, no man shall see me. Father didn't even say, even though we know that a part of holiness means to bear fruit. But he did not even say, without fruit, no man shall see me. He didn't say, glory be to God, hallelujah, without money. Well, he did, did not say, without money, no man shall see me. But he did say, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And that's both seeing him in heaven and seeing him on earth. How do I know? Because there was a blockage in Isaiah's life. And Isaiah said, in Isaiah chapter 6, he said, the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I sought the Lord. In other words, Uzziah, which represents the flesh, was a hindrance to Isaiah. Isaiah's focus was not totally on God, even though he was a prophet. But when God moved Uzziah, which represents the flesh, when God moved Uzziah, Isaiah said, It was then that I saw the Lord. So there are many people, you're preaching, but you ain't seeing God. You prophesying, but you ain't seeing God. You ain't know the last time you spoke to him. My God, you speaking in tongues, but you have no vision of God. My God Almighty, you're coming to church. But you have yet to see the Lord. Why? Because you are not walking in holiness. Holiness is living the character of Christ. Walking in the fruit of the Spirit. I did not say walking in a gift. I said walking in the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 6. So, so Esther had to be prepared. She had to be pruned. She had to be pressed. She had to be processed. My God Almighty. And some of it was difficult. Glory be to Jesus. But when she stepped before King Ahasuerus, as, or King Xerxes, same thing, as a finished product, she was pleasing in his eyes. And the Bible said that he favored her above all the other maidens. Why? Because she had passed the test. She had passed the process. She was walking in the character of God. The character of God is the character of holiness. And holiness is not a spooky word. Holiness just simply means to be different from the world. Holiness just simply means to be walking in the fruit of Holy Spirit. Holiness just simply means to be walking in the Word of God. Holiness just simply means to be walking in the character of God. Holiness just simply means to be a living example of Jesus Christ in the earth. 
got to tell you if you live in holy. You know when you live in holy and you know when you're not. Glory be to Jesus. And so therefore Esther, Esther is a spirit of holiness. Esther is a spirit of favor. Esther is a spirit of divine favor. And like I said, Esther can apply to both male and female. Because spirits don't have gender. And so a man can have the spirit of Esther. A woman can have the spirit of Esther. My God Almighty. I've seen children walking in the spirit of Esther. The spirit of supernatural, divine favor. My God Almighty. Now you got to understand that the spirit of Vashti, my God, I said I am an Esther and not a Vashti. Glory be to Jesus. The spirit of Vashti is a spirit, and the Lord showed this to me. As I was praying and preparing, the Lord said, even though Vashti was beautiful on the outside, there was none as fair as her in the palace. She was beautiful on the outside. She was persuasive. To the king, had influence upon the king to the point where he did not even want to get rid of her, even though she went against his protocol and laws. He loved that woman so much, but because he had made a decree, Lord Jesus, he had made a law, he had to stand by his word. And so, Vashti, Holy Spirit said to me, Vashti represents a spirit of rebellion. I said I am not a Vashti. I am an Esther. Glory be to Jesus. Vashti represents, glory be to God, the spirit of rebellion. Vashti knew what was her requirement. My God Almighty. Vashti knew what was expected of her. Vashti knew the protocols of the kingdom. But one day Vashti decided, I am no longer going along with that. I'm going to make up my own rule. I'm going to make up my own law. I'm going to go my own way. My God Almighty. And because of that, she was, ab she was abandoned by the king. And she was banished. Glory be to God. My God. She was sent into obscurity. Almost as if she did not exist. Why? Because there was a little Hebrew girl. There was a little Jewish girl. That God had already handpicked. That God had already separated. That was walking in humility. That was walking in holiness. That God had already rest his hand upon and said in his heart that I will use my God Almighty to save an entire nation. The spirit of Esther has the power not just to save a family or to save a community or even to save just a people. The spirit of Esther, which is a spirit of supernatural favor, has the power and the ability to save an entire nation, to save an entire ethnicity of people, to save an entire generation, to save an entire hemisphere. The spirit of Esther has the power to change the world. My God Almighty. Just the other day, I listened to Mr. George Floyd's daughter, a young man that was murdered, my God, by the police in the United States. And I said, I said it must be for this reason that he was born. And I heard his little daughter said, and she don't even understand the full weight of the words that she said. She 
probably may never even know the full ramifications of the statement that she made. But she said, my daddy has changed the world. One man, one black man that made one statement, I cannot breathe, has changed the world. The spirit of Ashti has the power through you to change your world. My God Almighty. And so therefore we got to understand that in this last time, in this last day, in this last season, we got to understand that God is calling the church to take on not the spirit of Ashti, but the spirit of Esther. I said, I am not Esther, Vashti, I am Esther. Esther automatically received the protection of the Lord. Glory be to Jesus, my God Almighty. This distress a little harder than I thought. <laughs> And I 
He said, the heart of the king is in my hand. So the heart of the king is in God's hand. And we are his servants. Most certainly God will give us power and authority and influence over and with the leaders of the earth. This is the possession of the job or the position of the church. The church is not to be abandoned to obscurity. We are not Vashti. We are Esther. We must come front and center and function in the spirit of favor to divinely influence the heart of the king that we might bring change in the earth and that God's kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. By God Almighty, Esther most certainly is a spirit of obedience. Glory be to Jesus. Esther obeyed everything that Hatash, who was the aid, the eunuch, that knew the ways of the king was assigned to her. She obeyed every one of his words. Why? Because he was in the presence of the king and that is where she was headed. My God. <laughs> and so therefore, we got to realize that in order for us to influence the earth, we have to stay in the presence of God Listening to every word from his spirit, which is our aid, which is our helper, which is our director. Hear me, which is the one, glory be to God, who is the supernatural midwife. Holy Spirit, the governor of the kingdom. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so therefore, my God, I feel your anointing. And so therefore the spirit of Esther, glory be to God, is a spirit of obedience, a spirit of humility, a spirit of holiness, a spirit of divine favor, a spirit of supernatural blessings, a spirit of supernatural protection. My God Almighty, I said I am not Vashti, I am Esther. Glory be to Jesus. And so in this season, God is raising up the body of Christ to walk in the spirit of Esther. Glory be to God. God is raising up the remnant to walk in the spirit of Esther. God is raising us up as a corporate body, as an organism. Glory be to God. To walk in the power, hallelujah, of the spirit of Esther. Where, wherever we go, glory be to God, people take note of us. When Esther walked in that hall, even though the scepter of the king was not stretched out to her, when she walked in that hall, she got everyone's attention. I said, when Esther walked in that hall, after hearing from Mordecai, a type of Holy Spirit, when she walked in that hall and she said with a tunnel vision, with a focused mind, understanding that it was for this reason that she came to the kingdom. It was for this reason that she was born. This was the hour, the time and the season for the manifestation of a purpose. So when she walked in that hall, she said, if I perish, let me perish. But I'm going to see the king. In other words, I'm going to fulfill purpose and walk in destiny. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the reason why the king had to extend the scepter. He had to do it. My God Almighty, I said a little bit in this uh, same message that when you are walking in purpose, God has to protect you. When you are walking in purpose, Father Yahweh must protect you. He must keep you. He must provide for you. He must cover you. He must take care of you. 
should lie. Nor the son of man. That he should repent. If he said that he'll do it. You can depend upon it. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to the mighty God. So God's getting ready to transition. There are many of you. Hallelujah Jesus. You have been pruned. You have been processed. You have been prepared. And you're now ready to walk in the spirit of Esther. Your time has come. Vashti has occupied your seat for too long. God says I'm getting ready to move the Vashtis out of your way. And I will replace you in the seat of Vashti. Why? Because you are Esther. Glory be to God. So in this supernatural shift, glory be to God, that's getting ready to take place on all levels, in varied proportions. Glory be to Jesus, all across the world, that's getting ready to be a supernatural shift, not just in the body of Christ, but in other spheres of influence. Glory be to God. But I must say to you, only those who have been prepared, only those who have been processed, only those who have been pruned, only those who have placed themselves in the hand, my God, we sing the song in the hand of the man that stills the waters. Only those that have a relationship with Christ shall be shifted in the position of Esther. For the position of Esther is a position of grace. It is a position of unlimited blessings. Overflow of blessings. My God Almighty. It's a position of turnaround. God's getting ready to turn some things around in your life. Hallelujah, Jesus. He had to turn things around in Hadassah's life. Because the Hadassah that came into the kingdom was not the same Esther that stood before the king and said, if I perish, let me perish. It was a changed woman. She was completely turned around. The spirit of Esther, not just the name Esther, but the spirit of Esther had taken her over. This is the season where God is getting ready to shift his people into the seat of Esther. Glory be to God. A seat of prominence. A seat of influence. A seat of supernatural blessings. A seat of supernatural overflow. A seat of supernatural protection. A seat, my God Almighty, of favor and grace like we've never experienced before. This is the season where the Esthers are about to arise. Glory be to God. And I say to you, arise Esther, for your time has come. Arise Esther, for your season is here. Arise Esther, and walk in your destiny. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father God. I am not Vashti. I am Esther. Glory be to God. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Holy God. Thank you for your word today. Glory be to the mighty God. And guess what? This is not something that you could force yourself into. God has to do it for you. You can't force yourself in a position that you don't belong in. Glory be to God. Only the Esthers that God himself has prepared are the ones that will sit on the throne. Glory be to God. And so, I say to you this day, walk in holiness. Walk in the word. Walk in obedience and submission to God. 
Seek the face of God. Stay in the presence of God. Glory be to Jesus. And watch how he will transform you from Hadassah to Esther. This is the season of transformation. Glory be to God. I said this is the season of supernatural transformation. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for joining us on Moments with the Prophetess. Most certainly watch it again. Get this word in your spirit. Share this with everybody you know. Glory be to God. Let them know, hallelujah, that the spirit of Esther has arrived. Glory be to God. It is a spirit of great favor. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I pray for you this day, every one of you that's watching me, I pray for you this day that you would walk in the spirit of Esther, that you would walk boldly and with confidence in your purpose, walking in destiny, knowing that the spirit of Mordecai, which is Holy Spirit, is walking alongside of you. And there is nothing that the devil can do to touch you. Why? The spirit of Esther brings with it the spirit of divine protection. And so today, most certainly, I say to you, discard the idea of Vashti. It's a spirit of rebellion. Take on the spirit of Esther, which is a spirit of favor. I am not Vashti. I am Esther. God bless you, each and every one of you. For those of you who are watching, glory be to God. And you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. I believe that the anointing is not just present. I believe that the anointing is also residual. In other words, if you watch this program 10 years from now, glory be to God, I believe that the presence and power of God would be just as real. Glory be to Jesus. And so therefore, whether you're watching this now, whether you're watching this five years from now, whether you're watching it tomorrow, glory be to Jesus, and you want to give your life to the Lord, you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please repeat this very simple prayer after me. If you mean it, trust me, Jesus will come into your heart. He'll be the Lord of your life. He'll be the Savior of your soul. I grew up in the churches of God, the Pentecostal denomination. And we used to sing this song. I guess that's why people say, boy, you fiery now. I'm a firebrand. I grew up in the Pentecostal church. That's why I only can teach holiness. That's all I know. Glory be to God. I refuse to accept anything else but holiness. Glory be to Jesus because that's God's standard. Hallelujah. And so there's a little song we used to sing in the church of God. And I remember me sitting down as a seven-year-old. I can remember me sitting down leading this song in the front of my Sunday school class. <laughs> and there's a little song that goes like this. It says... Into my heart Into my heart Come into my heart Lord Jesus Come in today Come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, oh my God, <laughs> into my heart, very simple song, into into my heart Come into my heart Yes sir Lord Jesus Come
Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, for I want to be more like you, Jesus, I, yes God, want to be more Hallelujah. I want to be a vessel you work through. I want to be more like you. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. So you say, Prophetess, I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to accept Jesus Christ. As my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Trust me. That's the best decision. You can ever make in your life. It's greater than who you will marry. It's greater than where you will go to university or college. It's even greater than the career that you will choose. Where you spend eternity. Is the greatest decision. You will ever make in your life. So you say I want to know Jesus Christ. As my Lord and Savior. I want you to pray. This very simple prayer after me. Say dear Lord Jesus. I come to you. I confess. I'm a sinner. In need of a Savior. I believe. That you lived, you died, you were buried, you rose again. I believe that you ascended into heaven. You're seated at Father's right hand. You're interceding for me. Therefore, I ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Be the Lord of my life. From this moment forward, <coughs> I will serve you with my whole heart. Well, if you said that and you meant that, welcome, welcome, welcome to the family of God. You're my brother. You're my sister. Trust me. I'll be praying for you. I love you. I will be praying for you. Thank you everybody for watching us tonight. Thank you everybody for joining in wherever you're watching us, wherever you are in the world, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Thank you so much for watching us. We love you. We're praying for you. Remember, if you want to be a part of the mentorship program, Call us here at Kingdom Explosion Ministries. Eric 242-823-6498. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon at 4 in our prophetic fire service. Have a wonderful evening, everybody.